He is known for being the founder of Western philosophy and one of the first moral philosophers of the ethical tradition of thought. He is recognized for his influential teachings, which were mainly conveyed through posthumous accounts written by his students Plato and Xenophon. He is Socrates, the enigmatic Greek philosopher from Athens. In the bustling city of Athens, there lived an enigmatic figure named Socrates. Although he authored no texts himself, his teachings and philosophy were preserved through the accounts of his students, particularly Plato and Xenophon. These accounts, known as dialogues, showcase the unique Socratic method of questioning and the concept of Socratic irony. Socrates was a polarizing figure in Athenian society, engaging in thought-provoking conversations that often challenged conventional wisdom. He sought to uncover the truth through a relentless pursuit of knowledge, often proclaiming his own ignorance as the first step in the journey of philosophy. In his dialogues, Socrates would engage his interlocutors in a series of short questions and answers, delving into the depths of various philosophical subjects. However, his unorthodox methods and outspoken nature eventually led to his downfall. In 399 BC, Socrates was accused of impiety and corrupting the youth. After a swift trial, he was sentenced to death. On his last day in prison, Socrates refused offers to escape, accepting his fate with unwavering conviction. Throughout history, Socrates' teachings have continued to resonate with philosophers and thinkers. His influence spanned across the ages, from medieval and Islamic scholars to the Italian Renaissance humanist movement. Even in modern times, philosophers like Soren Kierkegaard and Friedrich Nietzsche found inspiration in his ideas. Socrates' legacy remains alive in the realm of art, literature, and popular culture, firmly establishing him as a prominent figure in the Western philosophical tradition. His relentless pursuit of truth and his unique method of questioning continue to inspire generations, reminding us of the importance of self-reflection and the power of knowledge in shaping our understanding of the world. Socrates, the renowned philosopher from ancient Greece, was known for his unique method of inquiry called the Socratic method. This method, also known as the method of refutation, was a fundamental characteristic of Plato's portrayal of Socrates. It was prominently featured in the early works of Plato, such as Apology, Crito, Gorgias, and Republic I. The Socratic method aimed to challenge and expose the contradictions in the beliefs and arguments of his interlocutors. The typical Elenchus, as Socrates initiated a dialogue, followed a specific pattern. He would engage in a discussion about a particular topic with a recognized expert on the subject, often in the company of young men and boys. Socrates would begin by asking his interlocutor to provide a definition of the subject. As the conversation progressed and Socrates posed more questions, the interlocutor's answers would eventually contradict their initial definition. This led to the conclusion that the expert did not truly understand the subject in the first place. In response, the interlocutor might propose a different definition, which would then be subjected to further scrutiny through Socratic questioning. The goal of this method was to approach the truth, but more often than not, it revealed the ignorance of both Socrates and his interlocutors. By challenging the commonly held opinions and beliefs, the Socratic method cast doubt on the mainstream understanding of various matters. It is important to note that Socrates did not profess a fixed philosophical doctrine. Instead, he humbly acknowledged his own ignorance while engaging in the search for truth alongside his pupils and interlocutors. This approach fostered a spirit of intellectual inquiry and a willingness to question one's own beliefs. Scholars have debated the validity and nature of the Socratic method. In 1982, Gregory Vlastos, an esteemed scholar of ancient philosophy, argued that the Socratic method could not establish the truth or falsehood of a proposition. According to Vlastos, its purpose was to expose the inconsistencies in an interlocutor's beliefs. There are differing views on this matter, with some adhering to a constructivist approach, suggesting that Socrates aimed to refute claims through the method, while others argue that he aimed to establish the inconsistency between premises and conclusions. Regardless of the scholarly debates, the Socratic method continues to hold relevance and offers valuable insights for our daily lives. It encourages us to question our own beliefs, challenge conventional wisdom, and engage in critical thinking. By embracing the spirit of inquiry, we can strive to uncover truth and expose any inconsistencies or contradictions in our own reasoning. Socrates' method serves as a reminder that knowledge is a lifelong pursuit, and it is through questioning and open dialogue that we can expand our understanding of the world around us. Socrates, the renowned philosopher of ancient Greece, had a unique approach to his discussions. He believed in prioritizing the search for definitions, a practice that set him apart from others. When engaging in conversations, Socrates would often begin by seeking a definition from the experts on a subject. Whether it was discussing virtue, goodness, justice, or courage, Socrates wanted to understand the essence of these concepts. 
To establish a definition, Socrates would gather clear examples of a virtue and then delve deeper to find what they all had in common. He understood that in his time, sophists had challenged the meaning of various virtues, casting doubt on their existence. Socrates saw his quest for a definition as a way to clear the atmosphere from their radical skepticism and bring clarity to these important ideas. While some scholars argue that Socrates did not always prioritize definition, attributing this principle to Plato instead, others maintain that Socrates indeed endorsed it. One such philosopher, Peter Geech, accepted Socrates's endorsement but found the technique fallacious. Geech believed that one could know a proposition even without being able to define the terms used in that proposition. Socrates's emphasis on seeking definitions may have sparked debate among scholars, but his method offers valuable insights for our daily lives. By prioritizing the search for definitions, we can gain a deeper understanding of the concepts that shape our world. It allows us to question and challenge the prevailing notions, ensuring that we do not fall into the trap of blind acceptance. Socrates, the renowned philosopher of ancient Greece, was known for his humility in his belief that he possessed little knowledge. As he stood on trial, facing the possibility of death, he addressed the court, saying, I thought Ivinus a happy man, if he really possesses this art, and teaches for so moderate a fee. Certainly I would pride and preen myself if I knew these things, but I do not know them, gentlemen. Socrates acknowledged his own ignorance, especially when it came to ethical concepts like errate, the nature of which he admitted he did not understand. This apparent inconsistency in Socrates' claims of knowledge has puzzled scholars. Some suggest that Socrates was being ironic or modest for pedagogical purposes, aiming to encourage his interlocutors to think for themselves rather than providing them with predetermined answers. Others proposed that Socrates had different interpretations of the meaning of knowledge. For him, knowledge might refer to a systematic understanding of an ethical subject, which he firmly rejected, while accepting that he possessed lower-level cognition. Regardless, there is a consensus that Socrates believed acknowledging one's lack of knowledge was the first step towards wisdom. Socrates famously declared, I know that I know nothing. While this statement is often attributed to him based on Plato's Apology, similar views can be found throughout Plato's early writings on Socrates. However, in other instances, Socrates implied or even claimed to have knowledge. For example, he asserted during his trial, but that to do injustice and disobey my superior, God or man, this I know to be evil and base. In his debate with Callicles, he confidently stated, I know well that if you will agree with me on those things which my soul believes, those things will be the very truth. Scholars debate whether Socrates genuinely believed he lacked knowledge or whether he feigned ignorance to engage his interlocutors. Some argue that he pretended to be modest to encourage dialogue, while others contend that Socrates's words should be taken literally. Gregory Vlastos proposed a different interpretation, suggesting that Socrates distinguished between two types of knowledge, knowledge C, which is unquestionable, and knowledge E, derived from Socrates as Alenchus. According to this view, Socrates spoke the truth when claiming to know something with certainty, as well as when asserting his knowledge derived from his philosophical method. In conclusion, Socrates's philosophy emphasized the recognition of one's own ignorance as a crucial step towards wisdom. While his claims of knowledge may seem contradictory, they reflect his commitment to engaging in honest dialogue and seeking truth. Whether Socrates genuinely lacked knowledge or employed a rhetorical strategy remains a subject of debate among scholars. Nevertheless, his emphasis on humility and the pursuit of knowledge continues to inspire and challenge us in our daily lives. Socrates, the renowned philosopher of ancient Greece, was known for his unique style of communication that often left his audience puzzled. Many considered him to be an ironist, using subtle irony and humor in his conversations. One of the most famous examples of Socratic irony can be found in Plato's Euthyphro, where Socrates meets with a man named Euthyphro, who has accused his own father of murder. As the discussion unfolds, Socrates, in his characteristic manner, comments, It is not, I think, any random person who could do this correctly, but surely one who is already far progressed in wisdom. This seemingly praising statement is actually a subtle way for Socrates to challenge Euthyphro's understanding of the situation. Euthyphro, confident about his knowledge of divinity, boasts about it, leading Socrates to respond, It is most important that I become your student. Socrates often uses praise and flattery to ironic effect in engaging with others. Scholars have debated the reasons behind Socrates's use of irony. Some believe that it serves as a playful way to capture the audience's attention. Others argue that Socrates intentionally conceals his philosophical message with irony, making it accessible only to those who can unravel the layers of his statements. One scholar, Gregory Vlastos, suggests that Socrates's words possess a double meaning, both ironic and literal. 
For instance, when Socrates claims to have no knowledge, Blastos proposes that Socrates is being ironic, implying that he possesses knowledge in a different sense. However, this interpretation is not universally accepted. Socratic irony holds relevance in our daily lives as well. It reminds us to question assumptions, challenge our own beliefs, and seek deeper understanding. Just as Socrates used irony to provoke critical thinking in his interlocutors, we can employ this approach to engage in meaningful conversations and foster intellectual growth. By embracing the ambiguity and complexity of Socratic irony, we can become more open-minded and receptive to different perspectives, leading to personal and intellectual development. Socrates, the great philosopher from ancient Greece, had a unique perspective on human motivation and the pursuit of a fulfilling life. According to him, everything we do, whether directly or indirectly, is driven by the desire for eudaimonia, a state of flourishing and well-being. Socrates believed that virtue and knowledge were closely linked to eudaimonia, although there is still debate about the exact nature of this connection. Some scholars argue that Socrates saw virtue and eudaimonia as identical, suggesting that living a virtuous life is the ultimate path to true happiness. Others propose that virtue serves as a means to achieve eudaimonia, implying that it is a necessary component but not the sole determinant of a fulfilling life. Moral intellectualism played a central role in Socrates's philosophy. He firmly believed that all virtue was rooted in knowledge, emphasizing the importance of understanding and wisdom in guiding our actions. Socrates also held the view that humans possessed the cognitive power to comprehend their desires, diminishing the significance of impulsive behavior. In Plato's dialogue, Protagoras, Socrates famously stated that, no one errs willingly, highlighting his belief that people naturally seek what they perceive as good. According to Socratic virtue intellectualism, the intellect should take precedence in decision-making and living a good life, while irrational beliefs and passions should be downplayed. Plato's dialogues, such as Gorgias and Mino, further support Socrates' emphasis on intellectual motivation. These dialogues explore the idea that knowledge and understanding are key to living a virtuous and fulfilling life. While some scholars debate whether Socrates acknowledged the existence of irrational motivations, most agree that he left little room for them in his philosophy. Socrates believed that acrasia, or acting against one's better judgment, was impossible when guided by knowledge and reason. Socrates's philosophy offers valuable insights for navigating daily life. By recognizing the pursuit of eudaimonia as a driving force behind our actions, we can strive for personal growth and fulfillment. Embracing virtue and knowledge can help us make more informed choices and lead a life that is aligned with our true values. Socratic irony reminds us to question our beliefs and motivations, encouraging a deeper understanding of ourselves and the world around us. Socrates, the renowned philosopher of ancient Greece, challenged the religious beliefs and practices of his time, leaving a lasting impact on the discourse surrounding divinity. In a society where organized religion was fragmented and intertwined with daily life, Socrates' unconventional views sparked controversy and debate. Some considered him a practicing man of religion, while others labeled him a provocateur atheist. The impiety accusations brought against him during his trial exemplify the ongoing controversy that surrounds his religious stance. Socrates delved into discussions about divinity and the soul in works like Alcibiades, Euthyphro, and Apology. In Alcibiades, he drew a connection between the human soul and divinity, stating that by understanding all that is divine, one can gain the best knowledge of oneself. However, Socrates approached these religious discussions through the lens of rationalism, emphasizing the importance of critical thinking and philosophical inquiry. In Euthyphro, he challenged the common practice of making sacrifices to the gods in hopes of receiving rewards, asserting that true worship should be centered around the pursuit of knowledge and self-examination. Socrates' rejection of traditional forms of piety, which he associated with self-interest, urged Athenians to seek religious experiences through introspection. Socrates also presented a different perspective on the nature of the gods. Contrary to traditional beliefs, he argued that the gods were inherently wise and just. This perception challenged the prevalent religious notions of his time. In Euthyphro, Socrates posed the Euthyphro dilemma, questioning the relationship between piety and the will of a powerful god. He proposed that goodness is independent of the gods and that the gods themselves must adhere to principles of piety. In Xenophon's memorabilia, Socrates constructed an argument similar to the contemporary teleological intelligent design argument. He observed the universe's many features that exhibited signs of forethought and concluded that a divine creator must have crafted it. Socrates further deduced that this creator should possess omniscience and omnipotence, and that the purpose of the universe was the advancement of humankind. At times, Socrates referred to a single deity, while in other instances, 
he mentioned plural, gods, leading to interpretations that either a supreme deity commanded other gods or that various gods were manifestations of a single deity. Socrates' religious nonconformity and critical thinking revolutionized religious discussions in ancient Greece and have continued to shape religious discourse for centuries. His ideas challenged the prevailing beliefs of his time and encouraged individuals to engage in introspection and philosophical inquiry as a means of seeking religious experiences and understanding divinity. In several texts, Socrates claims to have a unique connection with the divine. He speaks of a demonic sign, an inner voice that he hears, particularly when he is about to make a mistake. This demonic sign is something that he has mentioned frequently, even during his trial. Socrates describes it as something divine and demonic, which Miletus, his accuser, mocks in his indictment. This connection with the divine started in Socrates' childhood, with the occurrence of a particular voice. Whenever this voice speaks to him, it always deterred him from the course of action he was intending to engage in. However, it never gives him positive advice. Despite this, Socrates believes that the opposition he faces from this voice, particularly in practicing politics, has been absolutely fine. Modern scholars have interpreted this Socratic demonic sign in various ways. Some see it as a rational source of knowledge, guiding Socrates away from potential mistakes. Others view it as an impulse or even a dream. There are even those who consider it a paranormal experience, felt by the ascetic Socrates. Socrates' connection with the divine, as demonstrated through his demonic sign, provides us with an important lesson for daily life. It teaches us the importance of listening to our inner voice, our intuition, when making decisions. Just as Socrates heeds the warnings of his demonic sign, we too should pay attention to that inner guidance that warns us away from harmful actions or choices. By acknowledging and respecting this inner voice, we can avoid unnecessary mistakes and regrets. It serves as a reminder to trust our instincts and to consider the potential consequences of our actions. Socrates' experience with the demonic sign reminds us that there is wisdom in listening to that divine intuition within ourselves. Socrates, the renowned philosopher of ancient Greece, had a profound theory about virtue. According to him, all virtues are essentially one, as they are a form of knowledge. For Socrates, the reason why a person may not be good is simply because they lack knowledge. In his view, since knowledge is united, virtues are also united. Socrates often emphasized the importance of knowledge in achieving goodness. He believed that if a person truly understands what is right and just, they would naturally act accordingly. This idea is captured in one of his famous quotes, No one errs willingly. Socrates believed that when people make mistakes or act immorally, it is due to a lack of understanding rather than a deliberate intention to do wrong. To illustrate his theory of virtue's unity, Socrates often used the example of courage. He argued that if someone possesses knowledge of the relevant danger, they would be able to face it bravely. This understanding of courage extends to other virtues as well, as they all stem from the same foundation of knowledge. Even Aristotle, another prominent philosopher, acknowledged Socrates' belief in the unity of virtues. He noted that Socrates sought to define justice, courage, and other aspects of virtue, considering them to be sciences. Socrates believed that by acquiring knowledge of these virtues, one could embody them in their actions and lead a virtuous life. Socrates' theory of virtue and the importance he placed on knowledge have significant implications for our daily lives. It reminds us that ignorance can be the root cause of immorality and wrongdoing. By seeking knowledge and understanding, we can strive to be better individuals and make ethical choices. Socrates' philosophy encourages us to constantly pursue wisdom and self-improvement, ultimately leading to a more virtuous existence. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.